now. now. Yes. This is a series of hack days. So the school here had, have, has organized together with partners the Open Data Hack Days for Stina Rosa. Then we had a tourism hack day here in Lucerne. There was the Milestone Innovation Festival in, in summer, in August. And there was the Open Data Hack Day, Shape My City. And now we are with the Tourism Hack Day. So we put the Innovation Festival from Hotel Suisse and our uh, hack days together. There will be a few more hack days, of course. You can visit the site of our partner, opendata.ch, to see more of them. Now we would like to give the word to the main sponsors. First, we would like to hand over to Raphael Enzler for a few welcome words. Thank you very much, Andreas. Also on behalf of the Tourist Office Lab, where I'm heading the project, a warm welcome to these hack days. Very briefly, what, are, what is the Tourist Office Lab? This is a network of uh, 17 tourism destinations in Switzerland, together with three University of Applied Science and the Swiss Tourism Association. And together we have the goal to create innovative projects and to exchange knowledge in the field of custom experience and customer service. And we are very much looking forward to this uh, exciting event actually already the third hack days where we are partnering. Very good, thank you, Raphael. I hand over to Zara. Yes, and I would like to hand over to Uli Schneider, um, head of business development at Hotelry Suisse and member of the executive board. Um, welcome, Uli. Hello, everyone. Also a very warm welcome from Hotelry Suisse, the Swiss Hotel Association. That's from the team present here now, that's Sara, Reto, Kartik, and myself. I'm, of course, extremely pleased uh, to be part of this kickoff today on the World Innovation Day today, together with our partners, High Blue Tourism Office Lab, Open Data, we can organize and carry out these tourism hack days in a corporation. And cooperation is an important keyword especially in a crisis like the one we are all experiencing now, and especially in tourism, of course, working together and cooperate um, is more important than ever. Only together we can uh, effectively face the challenges in these uh, special times. Um, and we at Hotel Swiss are absolutely convinced of this. That's why we get involved in uh, great events like these Hack Days, uh, next week. And that's why our motto of this year is hashtag better together. And uh, or just this morning, we launched a new innovation network for the hospitality industry, the so-called hospitality booster. Take a look on the website and register if you like to. It's you find everything on the hospitality booster.ch. But now we are looking forward to these exciting challenges and the Tourism Hack Days next week. I wish you lots of fun, energy, and inspired, inspiring solutions. And I'm very much looking forward uh, to the results. Thank you very much. Thank so, you, Willy. Thank you, uh, Willy. So I will hand over to Andreas Brandberg, who is the head of the Master of Science in a plate diet, uh, in a plate in Applied Information and Data Science here at the University of Applied Sciences in Lucerne. Andreas. Andreas, I think your microphone is still closed. Be muted. Sorry. Yes. yes. Do you now hear me? You. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, hello, everybody. Um, I'm also I'm very pleased to welcome you to the Tourism Hack Days 2021. And um, as the head of the master's program in applied information and data science, I'm really very happy that our students have the chance to work in such a stimulating environment. Hack Days uh, actually foster everything that data science is all about. I mean, it's creativity, intuition, technical excellence, 
domain expertise, teamwork, and communication skills. So I hope that the hack days will not only generate great ideas for the challenge owners, but also become a unique experience for all of you. With this in mind, let's get the party started. And uh, thank you for sharing your time with us. Thank you very much for all, to all of you for these nice words. We all hope that we have creative ideas and can work towards good solutions for the industry. Organizing a hack day is quite demanding and nobody does it alone. It's about getting people involved. It's about getting participants. Um, so we have a whole team. And I will quickly introduce the team to you. Maud Châtelet is working with opendata.ch. She will be helping with data. Then you can see my picture. I'm moderator and uh, co-moderating, co and I'm leading these, co-leading these hack days together with Sara. Then we have Lisa, who is responsible for the Slack channels and also for other IT tools. We'll hear her afterwards. Reto Rueck is co-moderating too. Today he's also there for communication. He has been doing a lot to acquire more participants and he will be communicating during the event also through social media. So does Pascal Humble. He is a student of the Master of Applied Data Science and he has been doing the communication work from the side of the school. Jeanette Ulrich helps the OCA with being comfortable in rooms and with food. So the OCA is partially present in one classroom, in a big one, of course. So everything is, is COVID comp compatible. She organized that. Dominic Knaus, he was in, strongly involved in the non-data challenges and will be helping with uh, uh, design management. Sarah Moser, you've heard already, and Stefan Hüttenmoser was involved in preparing one of the most demanding challenges and one of the best challenges today. All of them are very good, of course, and he has been preparing this one challenge, integrating data, and so that we can really hack from the first minute on if you choose that challenge. Okay, so that's about the o OC people. Now we have Pascal who has prepared this map. Pascal, what is it all about? Yeah, also a warm welcome from my side. Um, yeah, on this map, you see the reason why we're doing this hack days in English. Uh, the participants uh, are come from all around Switzerland and also from uh, Germany, Austria, and even Brazil. So it's quite interesting and uh, yeah, I wish you nice hack days and uh, funny days. Thank you very much, Pascal. So it's not only a national thing, it's also international. And I hope the participant from Brazil has not too many issues with uh, time. With time, We are already 96 participants in the call. Some more might join us for the hack days. As you can see, we have 133 participants on the list. Not all of them are hacking. Some of them are involved in another way, such as challenge owners or in other roles, coaches and so on. Yes. This is about the coaches, Sara, that's your part. We are, of course, very proud and grateful to have such great coaches with us again. Um, please, to all the team members, profit from their expertise and use them as a sparring partner. Um, it could be or it will be very helpful, I'm sure. Yes, we will introduce you to the coaches and how to date them at the beginning of the hack days on 28th of April. And you will see more and more coaches on the website appearing now. You have the link in the chat and on the slides here. Now we have all, or some of us have got a sponsored present. We didn't send it abroad. We must admit there we still, um, we don't have open borders for packages. It's about the EU and, and it, that will be very costly to send the package to EU people. 
but the ones that have left the address have received that package and we would like to thank you, IBM, Hotellerie Suisse, Adelboden Lenk, the Hochschule here and Hook for the presents that were in the package. This is the contribution of the OC and I hope we're all going to drink enough during the hack days, also if it gets late at night and we still work. Now, what are the hack days all about? I've made a word cloud about the words of the website. So, of course, it, at the center there is the tourism. It's an event, although it's not an in-person event, but it's still an event. There is a lot of data involved. We apply knowledge, we apply data to find new knowledge. It takes place in April. It should have the character of a festival. You will hear about the festival map, map right afterwards. And we all will work towards good solutions. There are more aspects of it. You can see it. You will learn it. You will experience it. The schedule. We will quickly present you a rough schedule. Today, we have the kickoff and the group building. And then next week, there will be the hack day start at nine o'clock on 28th of April. We will start in the same Zoom session. So use the same link as, you view, as you're using now um, to start the hack days. You will, we will not talk a lot, I promise, at the start, but it's good to have everybody together for the start next week. We will start the presentations or the groups will present, the, the hackers will present their results on April 29th, again in the same Zoom session at two o'clock, from two o'clock onwards. And we will also have a virtual apero on April 29th, right after, right after the presentation. So I hope many people are going to be there. So now my screen tells me that we have 100 participants in the in the call now, so let's do it. I think that's a slide for Sarah again. Yes, thank you, Andreas. During these two days, you'll find all links on this festival map. This map will be on our website, innovationfestival.ch. You will find there the main stage for the general slots, as Andreas mentioned before. We will also have uh, the link to the team room, so each team will have their separate rooms. We will find um, a tent where you find the coaches, even the time slots when they are available. And you will have also a tent for support, for questions and a chill out area. And during the whole event, of course, you always can reach us via Slack. Thank you, Zara. So I think we start now. Exactly. We don't want to talk more about non-data challenges, uh, uh, non-challenge non issues. We would like to start with the data-based challenges. And there are some rules. Each pitch should be three minutes and not longer. We call for the next three pitches series to get ready. So for challenge owners to get ready. Um, all presenters, should turn off the mic should turn on the microphone we will switch the slides so there is no uh, switches in terms of screen share we will switch the slides for you and we will discuss about every challenge in the breakout room so please no discussion now with these 100 people in the call we will do that with the challenge or you can do that with the challenge owners afterwards in the breakout rooms after all uh, challenges are pitched. So if you're interested in one or the other challenge, you might write down the number. The rooms of the breakout sessions will afterwards have the same number. Of course, there will be a little hint in terms of the title of the challenge in, for the breakout room, but the number is the one that is deciding. And you will see that there will be a, a no number seven challenge, no number eight challenge. So the number has no meaning. It doesn't mean that the number one is the best. So just note down the number. It makes it easier to manage the challenges. Good, let's start. 
with Jürgen Hover. So Jürgen will be the first one. And afterwards, we will have Pascal Krieger from Bike Kingdom. Then we would have Beat Blumenthal with challenge number three. And we will let you know the, the order afterwards uh, for the challenges. So I hand over to Jürgen, please. Hello, everybody. My name is Jürgen Hofer. I am the manager of the holiday destination Solothurn. Solothurn is a small town located in the northwestern part of Switzerland. The beautiful old town, the Jura Mountain Weissenstein and the River Aare are its most important touristic attractions. Solothurn is well known for city trips, boat cruises, as well as hiking and biking. Our challenge partner, the Diemtigtal area, is situated, situated at the entrance of Bernese Oberland. The Diemtigtal Nature Park and the ski resort of Virihorn are well known for hiking and biking in summertime and for snow sports in wintertime. Both destinations welcome mainly guests from Switzerland. Most of them stay for one day but also the number of hotel guests is steadily increasing. The aim of the destination management organization is to offer its guests the best possible service. But we have a serious handicap. We don't know our guests very well. What does it mean? We don't know how they, how they decide to travel. We don't know their profile and how they move at destinations. We don't know enough about the visitor frequencies on the hotspots and especially on the hiking and biking trails. What do we expect from the challenge? A better understanding of decision-making, of how guests move at destinations, of the customer and its needs and the frequency forecast for attractions. What is the use for us and our guests? Possibility of visitor guidance to avoid overcrowding. Better information for decision making on the electronic platforms. Products who fulfill better the needs of our guests. Legitimation against public authorities in terms of the costs of tourism infrastructure. What is the problem to get this information? Database, especially addressing the use of hiking and biking trails in both areas is small. The challenge is to get results with a combination of alternative data like cable, cable car frequencies, webcam data, weather forecast, Google Analytics, and so on. We hope the challenge number one, tourists in public space, is of interest for many of you. We would appreciate to work with creative and curious people looking for a new tool which helps to make our guests happier. Thank you very much for your interest. That was exactly three minutes. That's what my watch tells me. Thank you very much, Jürgen. We would like to hand over to Pascal Krieger from Bike Kingdom. Thank you very much for the introduction, Andreas. Um, I welcome you to pitch of challenge number two, visualization of mountain bike frequency in uh, biking the Melanza Heide. Um, mountain biking is one of the uh, most important business segments of tourism in Lenza Heide. Accordingly, um, a lot has been invested in mountain biking in the last, um, well, more than 10 years. Uh, we built bike parks, skill centers, trails, hosted World Cups, World Championships, and more. And in 2020, a dedicated brand was developed for mountain biking in Lenzerheide. This is uh, Bike Kingdom Lenzerheide. With this new brand, we created uh, a lot of success. It was the most successful summer we had up to date. But unfortunately, it uh, also led to... Um, to crowded hotspots on certain points on the mountain. And this crowd, therefore, leads to, to this challenge. So what we like to do is um, we'd like to distribute mountain bikers evenly on the whole 900 kilometers of trails we have in the, the bike kingdom and not only at the, uh, at the hotspots. 
we want to get insights from guest interest, demographic and psychological aspects of trail users and how they can be applied to various trail types. And we want to improve our infrastructure based upon data rather than uh, assumptions. Therefore, we need to visualize the trail usage on a map. We want to create a usage reporting for each trail based on uh, popularity, frequency, usage, and so on. Uh, we want to further measure trail popularity and usage to create new tours, to create new services, and to finally create um, a better guest experience. For in terms of data sets, we have um, we we built our own Bike Kingdom app, which is a bike map a bike app that has been downloaded forty eight thousand times, and fourteen percent of them um, records their their rides through uh, through GPX data. We have a turnstile data of uh, the mountain railway usage of the last five years. Um, we have the raw data of the biggest mountain bike survey in Switzerland that's happened to date. We have statistics of uh, bike sales from the Association of Mountain Bikes and statistics of overnight stays. So for this challenge, um, it is important for the participants to, um, to sign a data handling sheet because of um, various uh, sensitive data such as um, app data and uh, mountain railway statistics, for example. Thank you very much for listening. I'm looking forward to solve this challenge next week. Thank you very much. Again, three minutes. Filling in a form about handling data means these data are really sensitive. If they're real, um, therefore, these uh, data sets are very nice to look at. So looking forward to the solutions of the students and participants. Next challenge is price, elastic, uh, price elasticity of holiday apartments. And I would like to ask Beat Blumenthal from Heideland to present it. Yes, hello everybody. Um, I'm Beat from the beautiful holiday destination Heideland. Uh, for, uh, to everybody who thinks we are an amusement park, no, we're not. We are really a destination with high mountains, clear blue lake, we are very famous for our thermal water in Badrogatz. Together with my colleagues from also very nice destinations, Gstaad and Engadin, and the partner Edomitil, uh, who is a rental platform for holiday apartments, we have uh, a very interesting challenge for you. Maybe you can change it. Yeah, motivation. Um, the problem we have uh, mostly in the mountain destination is that uh, we have a lot of private people who rent their apartments. Uh, they're not very professional and they don't know really what's, what price they should uh, take for, for, for the rental. Uh, so they often come to us, to the tourist offices and ask, okay, what, what kind of price should I make? Uh, is there a price difference midweek, weekend, uh, whatever, for families, for couples? Uh, and this is really difficult because there's no really... Uh, we, we have information in the past from reservations, but we don't have anything uh, we can take and have a look. Okay, this would be really uh, be a price uh, we recommend for them. So the goal is, um, if you can change the slide, please. Mm -hmm. I too, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that we can analyze, visualize, and compare the price elast uh, elasticity um, of especially holiday apartments, the market, not the hotels, but the holiday market. Uh, interesting is, okay, what kind of price should they have uh, during holiday seasons or over bank holidays uh, when local events take place? Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the difference between uh, the midweek and the weekend rentals uh, there's a lot of money you can make when you have the right price. Also, the seasonal demand and the regional demand is, is uh, uh, a factor that uh, uh, should, should be recommended in that. Uh, the data set we have is also real data from all destinations for, from us, Heideland Tourism, Gstaad and Engadin. Uh, from, from Engadin, I think, uh, no, sorry, uh, 
from all destinations, heute am Start der Dengardin, there are also more uh, data coming from the, the partner e-domicil, as I mentioned. Uh, we have four complete years as a data set, more than 15,000 records, uh, real data uh, from the past, from rentals, from apartments, uh, which should help to uh, get a tool for us uh, that we can help uh, the apartments or the owner of the apartments to find the best price for rental. So I'm looking forward to see you guys in breakout room number three afterwards. Thank you very much, Beat, and also thank you very much to the students who have prepared all the three challenges. The data uh, are prepared to work with. So we now go on to the next block, which is challenge number four, Grand Tour Navigation, Moderate, uh, introduced by Maria Sagisser, afterwards Markus Dittli with sites around me, and then Martin Suchek and Tina Karabas about finding similar tools and integrate open reviews. So, Maria, it's up to you. Yes, hello everybody, and welcome to challenge number four. I'm pretty sure it's the most difficult challenge because I first faced it uh, seven years ago already and no one can solve it. So uh, we just waited for you. <laughs> My name is Maria Sagesser. I'm a head of product development and innovation at Switzerland Tourism. And before that, I was responsible for the Grand Tour of Switzerland. The Grand Tour of Switzerland is a road trip through Switzerland and it's actually a round trip uh, that is 1,600 kilometers long and the problem we have is that we have beautiful signposts so we have 650 physical signposts but they only um, direct the route in one way and not in the other one and they're not 100% reliable because people they want a navigation system and we want to give our guests like more convenience we want them to give a state of the art navigation and so far believe it or not <laughs> we just couldn't get it we talked to google maps to garmin to tom tom all the, the leading navigation companies and they first said yeah no problem we can do it for you but actually no one can solve it so we have a gps track we have uh, different types klm tracks etc that's not the problem but we cannot have a turn by turn navigation which means like a voice based navigation that you know from your navigation system that really leads the guest along the route this is not possible so far but that's what we need from you so we would love you to hack this turn to turn navigation along the route and if possible also if a guest just goes and visits a highlight or goes to a hotel a little bit further away from the route to actually navigate the guest always back to this track the track is clearly defined but um the navigation is not solved sounds funny but it's the truth um the data set we have for you are all the, the tracks the gpx tracks that's uh, uh, all downloadable on on this uh, link and we have open street map google max all the, all the formats you can imagine we have them but we don't have the solution so I'm okay. happy to see you to solve it. Sounds like a true challenge, and I'm happy. Absolutely. And that we, I'm happy that we have specialists for OpenStreetMap at the Hack Days who work in Rapperswil, so maybe they find a way to get a bit closer to your solution that you wish. Hopefully. Thank, thank you, Maria. Uh, we go on to the next challenge, which again comes from Schweiz Tourismus. ST stands for Switzerland Tourism, which is presented by Markus Dittli. Markus, please. Yes, hello everybody. Um, warm welcome also from my side. Uh, my name is Markus Dittli. I'm working for Switzerland Tourism. I'm working together with Maria. And we have another challenge, uh, challenge number five, and it's about around me experiences. We have plenty of beautiful places and experiences in Switzerland, but often um, people don't know about those experiences. So, um, for example, I've missed for several years the beautiful um, Domina Gorge uh, nearby Padergatz. And uh, why, why is that? Um, nobody told me. 
but uh, we also didn't have a solution, a, a, a recommendation system, um, which is guiding me to those beautiful experiences. So I was driving by car from, from Zurich to Davos several times, and I was uh, driving and passed uh, Bader Gatz and, and the beautiful Tamina Gorge, but I didn't know that. So what we want uh, to achieve is we want our guests to have uh, the to explore the activities, the experiences nearby, and, and, and that's why the challenge is also called around me sites. Um, of course, uh, those those uh, experiences should be um, reachable within a certain amount of time. With that, they defined one hour. This sounds uh, pretty easy, but um, it isn't. So we think it's a real challenge because uh, let's think about you're staying in Lanzerheide and if you're doing just a radio search, you will also get results from Arosa. But, but it's not that easy uh, to get from Lanzerheide to Arosa. Of course, there are the mountain railways, but for most people uh, driving by car, especially on, on the Grand Tour, um, they won't want to um, explore the activities and experiences by their own transport system. On the other hand, we also uh, want to provide a solution for different uh, transport systems like the public transport. So if you're um, on your way with, with, um, with the train, um, we have to um, give other recommendations than by car, if you're traveling by car, because you're more flexible by car, but you're limited um, where you, um, um, which destination or place you visit when, when using the train. So, and in, in uh, addition, we, we think about um, a, a solution which, is, which detects uh, how you're on your way. So if, if you're using public transport or if you're using the car. And last but not least, we think about a, a, a the goal that we want to give a prediction. So if you're on your way from point A to point B, um, we um, think we should uh, recognize and, and respect uh, the moving behavior. So um, not only focusing on the around me, but also focusing on where I'm going to. So, okay, Marcus, you have only 10 seconds left. 10 seconds. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm fine with that. We have all experiences and places um, on that platform called Open Data API, myswitzerland.io. And if it's going to, to uh, calculate how long do you need um, for traveling from point A to B, we are also, uh, you also can rely on OpenStreetMap or Google. Thank you for uh, challenge um, participating for this challenge. See you and hear you soon. Thank you, Marcus. The next challenge is about open tour reviews, and we have two challenge owners there. One is from Outer Active, it's Martin Suchek, and it's Tina Karavas, who is doing kind of a project with open tour reviews. That's right. Thank you, Andreas. Um, can you see me already? Yeah, we can hear you. You can hear me, but you cannot see me. Hmm? Um, okay, then uh, that's fine, I guess. Um, no? We're looking at the slides. All right, super. All right, so hi everyone. My name is Dina. I am from the Open Reviews Association and together with Heidiland Tourism, Outdoor Active, Schweizmobil and Kobut, I'm happy to present you the Hack Heidi Tours Challenge. Um, so it is about bringing open data and online reviews to tours such as hiking, mountain biking, snowshoeing, you name it. Um, so what is the motivation for this challenge? So we all know of the power of online reviews to help people make better decisions for choosing restaurants, hotels, or other places. But when it comes to tours, there are almost no implementations uh, where people could read and write reviews. So uh, we believe this should really change because there are many useful things to share, like uh, what are the current conditions, uh, where are the difficult, uh, dif difficult spots on the tour, uh, uh, was the track easy to follow, and, and many more questions. Questions. And we believe that this kind of uh, open sharing would help people to be better prepared and to reduce the chances of disappointments. And at the same time, 
um, this shared reviews data can help local tourism organizations to get feedback and improve. And this brings us now to the goal of this challenge. So on the one hand, we need your help to identify when tours from different platforms are similar enough to be matched. And this will contribute to defining an industry standard for a unique tour identifier so that the ratings from different sources can be aggregated. And on the other hand, you can demonstrate how to implement open reviews for tours. So you will have the chance to work in a test environment of the Heideland tour portal and really play around with the different tour and open reviews APIs. And finally, it would be great to develop a strategic approach for how to roll this out across the major outdoor platforms and, and tourism websites. So let's talk about data. So uh, we provide thousands of tours from the largest platforms, such as Autoactive, Schweizmobil, and Komoot. And in addition, you can use several existing tools, such as uh, tour and reviews APIs and the test environment of the Heideland tour portal that I mentioned already. And of course, we have some technical and domain experts who are really happy to help you at every step. So to sum it up, why should you join our challenge? Firstly, you can work with real data and help to define an open industry standard that benefits local tourism. And secondly, you can learn new skills and uh, with, with rapid prototyping by hacking the Heideland tour portal. Uh, and finally, you can continue working on this topic together with us after the event, uh, because we are really committed to move this forward as a collaborative community effort. So thank you very much and hope to see you later. Thank you, Dina. Uh, and thank you already for the perspective. So this challenge is not only a challenge, it will go on. And probably that's true also for the results of the other challenges. Now, in tourism, we have data that is always relevant. And this data, is, or part of it is weather and Feiertage. So Christian Pfister has prepared two sets who will be presented by him quickly. Yes, hello and welcome to the Hack Days. In order to successfully work on certain challenges, we have two APIs for you. The School Vacation API, which provides the school holidays and public holidays from 2016 to 2023 for over 30 countries. The API key is Tourism Hack Days 2021, and the documentation can be accessed from the website firetaxcalendar.ch. Secondly, we have Weather API, which provides all important weather data from 2008 upwards and forecasts up to the next 14 days in the future. The documentation can be accessed via weatherstack.com. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. You now have a lot of links in the chat. We will send you all these links via the email that you get on Monday. So you don't need to write them down now. Uh, you will get them via email. If you need them, you can, of course, click them. So that's it for the data challenges. We now come to the non-database challenges that are moderated by Sara and Reto. I hand over to you, Sara. Sara or Reto? Sorry, Sorry my micro, yes. Um, we are ready, I already said, but you did not hear me. Um, we start with challenge 22, alternative types of accommodation, and I hand over to Onna. Thank you very much, Sarah. I'm happy to present the following challenge on behalf of the challenge owner, Andy Hartmann, from Schlafas Experience in the Grisos. Um, next slide, please. Thank you very much. So the motivation is the following. Um, alternative types of accommodation are, for example, tiny houses, which combine accommodation with a staging of experiences. This is an upcoming trend, but still not used to its full potential in Switzerland. Um, furthermore, hybrids between classical accommodation and experience design could function as a valuable product for off-seasonal tourism. For example, figures from France show that tiny houses are extremely popular, almost fully booked all year. 
So the goal is to, to answer the following questions. What kind of tiny houses are possible in Switzerland? In what regions do they make the most sense? Um, furthermore, it's very um, vital to know what um, legal restrictions are in regard to tiny houses, um, such as building regulations, safety measurements, etc. And last but not least, maybe you have um, also other questions, but the one we would uh, like you to answer is how should tiny houses be positioned alongside normal accommodation, such as hotels, holiday homes, etc., and how should they be managed? Thank you very much, and we're looking forward to welcoming you. Thank you very much, Ona. Um, I hand over to Mik, who is ready with Challenge 21, hopefully, resilience in the tourism industry. Yes, Sarah, I'm ready. Thank you <laughs> for handing over to me. Uh, my name is Mik Hefliger. I'm heading up the innovation management at Grison Tourism uh, in Hoor. Uh, so the challenge number 21 is about resilience in the tourism industry. What does that mean? So the motivation of it is um, since I'm in, uh, in this industry since four years, I have faced different kinds of crises. So first year was no snow in winter, followed by two hot summers, even in the mountains, uh, which avoided um, people to come here. Um, so then we had the Swiss franc euro shock, so this currency shock uh, we all remember. Swiss franc is, uh, was far too strong, so people from European states didn't come. Then we had the terrorism in Europe, which was a problem, especially for the overseas states, um, Switzerland sitting in the middle of Europe, that they didn't have the confidence anymore um, to be safe here. And now we have the corona pandemic. So with each of these crises coming up, we were always surprised. We didn't have any recipe to turn it into a chance or into an opportunity. So now what is the goal? The goal is, please change the slide. I can't, I don't know it by heart. <laughs> uh, the goal is uh, how can this cri can crisis become an opportunity? So how to make tourism more re resilient? We should find a recipe for a crisis-proof tourism. That's actually really the main goal. It sounds very easy, but I think it's quite tough to solve because we need a strategy, precautions and measures uh, which need to be taken so that the tourism industry becomes more resilient in future crises. And we think that this is the mother of all questions before running any activities at this very moment, at least. So thanks to join this team. Thank you, Mick. Um, I already hand over to Oliver for challenge 12 COVID info platform traveling in Switzerland. I think it's Oliver or Jan. No, it's me. <laughs> Hi everyone. You, it's you. Very <laughs> Thank welcome. You, <laughs> Thank you. My name is Oliver Tamas and um, I'm working for Switzerland Travel Center as the director of digital marketing and e-commerce. So um, actually this idea of this challenge number 12 is about a COVID information platform um, for traveling in or even more to Switzerland. So we think that is a very actually important topic for traveling in the future with the risk of Corona. So it's all about uh, inspiring a good feeling for holidays in Switzerland, um, all about through information and trust. The idea is um, um, of this challenge resulted from a workshop of the Think Tank Tourism. It was together with Jan Biller of the Agent in Glowing Blue. I think he's also here. Hi, Jan. Um, okay, motivation. What is the motivation? We think the need for information is, is growing because of Corona. Potential Swiss travelers will, will have a lot of questions about safety, travel regulations, um, what activities can we do in Switzerland? And, and that we think all this informa information is needed to be, that the tourist will have this information before he will book a trip. So there is also the problem that these regulations are changing all the time, you know that. Um, they are even different from region to region, maybe even within destinations. 
it can change all the time. So it will be very difficult for everybody to know the situation um, in every destination, for every home, home country, it's different and no one will be able to give advice to the guests. So what are our goals? The goal is to give the potential guest information they need before booking and traveling to Switzerland. And of course, during the trip, they need to know what to do in case of, of emergency or, or for testing, where can I test, what, what can I do? So we think about information like um, entry and exit requirements, regulations with quarantine rules, security concepts, um, infection figures, uh, what else, Vac vac vaccination rates, you know, all these this figures at the moment. So um, this, challenge, this challenge is also a little bit data-based because it um, must be ensured that information is always up to date and complete. The main goal is to gain the trust of guests and to show that holidays in Switzerland are easy, clean and safe. And of course, all the information are easy accessible on a modern touristic website. Um, that's the most important thing. So thank you very much. Thank you, Hope Oliver, you. very much. Um, I'm quite sure that Lorenz and the Digital Nomads with Challenge 13 is already ready. I am ready. Yeah, I'm Lorenz. So, hi. Okay, challenge number 13. The question is, there a Swiss village ready to become a digital nomad village? You can see uh, us from the digital nomads. Uh, I'm the president of the digital nomad Switzerland sitting in a train working on our computers and we are sure that these guys could be the next generation tourists for the Swiss Alps. Yeah, the motivation is easy. Uh, COVID has changed the life of every uh, white collar worker. So we had home office, we had uh, to work from home. And a lot of people were work, did, did some experience with working from the Alps. So they changed their seat from the home office to the Alps and did some good, had some good experience with that. Uh, we are sure there, there are a lot of international remote workers want to, wanting to co come to Switzerland for work and they will stay, let's say, one month, two months, three months, you name it. So we have some experience with very successful co-living projects in Greement. The name is Swiss Escape. There is a mistake in the spelling there, but that's name. No matter. And we have <laughs> Mia and Chadina project and we have some experience uh, there. So what's a co-living? You, you all know the co-working. So you sit there, you work on your, your computer. Co-living is the next step. Co-living is you work or you live under the same roof and you work on the same table. So it's co-working and living together. That makes the co-living. Yeah, what, what we'll do in our challenge, we ask, is there a Swiss mountain village that is ready to become a digital nomad village? We are sure there are villages interested in that term, but it's very important to understand what a remote work client will do in the day. It's not just working. There's a lot of activities around. So you are the professionals in tourism. You know exactly what they uh, will do, but we can tell you from the from our site what they will do and it's very important that tourism managers and hoteliers uh, are familiar with requirements of remote workers because uh, yeah they will sit in a restaurant opening their laptops working on their laptops and we know that it it's working we have a good example from uh, from portugal madeira island uh, more than 100 digital nomads are there on the Madeira Islands working for more than one month on the same in the same place. So we are happy to welcome you on challenge number 13. Thank you, Lorenz, very much. 
Um, I hand over to Diana, value creation for cable cars, it's challenge 14. Thank you very much, Sarah. Hello, everybody. My name is Diana Matli, and I'm working for URI Tourism, the regional tourism organization. In the canton URI, we have more than 40 publicly used cable cars. Our cable cars are an important USP for us as a regional tourism organization. Many cable cars provide access to agricultural farms in higher areas. For the farmers, the cable cars often have existential importance. But as already said, the cable cars are also quite important for tourism as the Canton Uri has the closest cable car network in Switzerland. Our goal for the Innovation Festival, during these two days, we would like to generate new ideas and possibilities in order to increase the value of the small cable cars in the Canton Uri. The big challenge at this topic is the wide range of small cable cars in our Canton. We have almost everything between a small two-person cable car which can be put into operation around the clock with a token and the gondola with 15 seats, which is operated and run according to a timetable. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Challenge number six. And I hand over now to my uh, colleague, Andrea. Andrea, are you ready? Thank you, Sarah, for introducing me. I'm ready. Um, our aim at Hotelier Swiss, as I am your colleague, is to offer our <laughs> members the best possible support in their daily challenges. And um, calling ourselves the Association for the Sustainable and Innovative Accommodation Operator, our aim is to so support the members with product services, a network of consultants and suppliers on their path to a more regenerative and sustainable accommodation industry. So uh, facing the surrounding of this challenge, there is a high need for charging infrastructure until 2030, the federal government is pursuing the goal to, to uh, achieve a share of 10 to 15 percentage of cars on our roads that are electric, which leads to an increasing demand for charging infrastructure. And this leads us to a demand, to a need in touristic regions and accommodation sports. There are very, very many different players in this, um, in this surrounding, in this um, metier of charging infrastructure, such as the hotel manager, owner of the business, building which is not necessarily the same person, stuff to maintain, the community that provides electricity infrastructure, energy providers that uh, sell their electricity, infrastructure providers that are really selling the charging columns, many, many suppliers of billing technologies, and uh, there exist consultants helping to struggle with this part, with parts of the struct of this project, and as well platforms to uh, market their infrastructure for the hotels. Besides, there are regulations, but as, as well fundraising by the government. You may assume that with, with the construction and management and administration of this charging infrastructure is um, is making the at first glance simple seeming installation of charging infrastructure quickly complicated and becoming a time consuming and cost intensive project for a hotelier. Coming from the starting position, I would like to take a look at the goal for, of this challenge. The federal government is funding the boost to boost this network. And concerning this, we need to create the advisory approach to lower the hurdle that I um, explained before that prevents this development of an e-charging e e network so far. So we are looking, aiming for a business model in this challenge that considers these funding options, brings together all those stakeholders, and in addition, coordinates the role and boosts this development. I'm very looking forward to meet some business model cracks to drive forward this sustainable approach in uh, room 16. 
Thank you, Andrea, very much. So now the last four challenges will be presented by my colleague Reto. So Reto, the stage is yours. Thank you, Zara. Welcome from my side as well. So then I hand over to the next um, challenges. It's challenge number 17 and presented by Lukas Kaldermatten. Lukas. Hello. Lukas Kalbermatten, is is he here or <laughs> is there somebody? Rito, probably we just go forward to challenge number to eight. To the next one, yes. Then and then to we come me. back to 17, okay. if, if uh, possible. So then Michael Böhler is the next uh, 18. Michael, I hand over to you. What happened? <laughs> So we are missing some people, huh? <laughs> or we go to the next one, to the 19, overview of training and development opportunities of Michael. Hello, yeah. Come okay. back. Super. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, hey, I'm Michael. Nice to meet you. And I'm from Company Factory and I would like to um, show you the challenge. So it's an overview of uh, training and development opportunities for hoteliers. And the, the motivation for this is that we had several talks and interviews and challenges with hoteliers. And we, we figured out two points there. And the first point is that there is, um, especially during, during the last few months, during Corona times, there's a huge need and acknowledgement of the importance of trainings and education for their employees through the whole, um, through the whole hotel. And the second thing we realize is that there is a huge offer, a huge range of offers of different qualities of digital and physical um, uh, offers of private and public institutions, schools, etc., for different trainings and education. And what, what's the problem there is that we realize that there's, um, there's this huge range of offers with different qualities, and it's really hard for small and medium sized hotels to figure out which one are the right offers for their own employees because they all change a little bit, they all have different needs. And it's really, really hard for, for the chief or the responsible person of the hotel to, to figure out next to the daily operational business, which one are the right trainings. And it's in a bit of a um, dilemma because he would really like to give them the training. He would like to give them the opportunity to educate themselves, to go further and so on. But he doesn't know which one is the right offer. So the, the, the goal for this challenge is to first of all figure out what are these criteria we need to, to, um, to enable the hotelier to, um, to find out the right offer. This can, for example, be does it um, need to be remote or physical or is it um, what's the specific role of the hotel, what's the duration or how can it be structured? And the second thing is how can we can we make a digital, for example, a digital platform a di or a digital solution to show these offers, structure them, and make them as easy accessible as possible for the responsible person. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. So then we go further with Fiona Müller. How can we promote sustainable tourism in travel? Fiona, are you here? Yes, I am here. Super. Thank you, Rito. Um, yes, so my name is Fiona and I am working for Guru Food, which accompanies, advises and initiates projects in tourism. So our challenge number 20 is how can we encourage sustainable travel behavior in tourism? So sustainability in tourism is a timely and very important issue that is currently discussed in many initiatives. 
Um, in this challenge, what we would like to think about together is how exactly a desired behavior, in this case, sustainable travel behavior, can be influenced among guests. So we want to approach the topic of sustainability in tourism from the point of view of the users, which are the guests visiting and traveling around Switzerland. So um, it is important to, while it is very important to create sustainable tourism offers, it is very crucial that travelers adapt their behaviors accordingly. So um, the question really is, how can we recognize and strengthen sustainable actions among individual travelers? Yeah. So the goal is to um, find a way to promote individual travel behavior um, in a way that supports the sustainability goals in Swiss tourism. Um, we propose to approach this question following a design thinking process. So we would like to deal with the problem before moving on to the solution. What does that mean exactly? So, um, for example, when we ask how can we encourage sustainable travel behavior in tourism, who is actually meant by we? So we would ask our question, who would, uh, who specifically can and should promote sustainable behavior? And what does sustainable travel behavior look like in our opinion? So if you also want to deal with these questions, you should definitely register for our challenge number 20. And once we define the problem, we can work together on solutions and with a bit of luck present a prototype on the second day of the hack days. Oh, thank you, Fiona. Then we try again is uh, in the meantime. Uh, Lukas here, Lukas Kaltermatten from Challenge 17, or Michael Böhler for Challenge 18, overview of IT tools along the value chain. These two are missing. Okay, uh, I, I oh. think we, we have to go on. Uh, okay. There are there are a few things left to say. Maybe we can try try again afterwards with these two gentlemen. But uh, we have a little input about communication tools now. Let me switch the slides. Um, for the plenaries, we will always use Zoom. We will always use the same link as I said already. So please keep this link that you've got in the in the in the report in the in the little um, PDF that you've got when you when you applied. Now uh, we have Slack that we're also going to use and Lisa is going to introduce Slack. Well, thank you very much. Um, it's just a little short intro. Uh, I just saw that lots of you already joined Slack at the moment. Um, there, I will also post a link for you in the Zoom chat link. You can just click on the first uh, link then, which says Slack invitation. And then you can basically join Slack. If you still want to look up uh, a video or some sites, I will also send you the links to get a bit uh, closer to the topic and here on the slide you can also see the picture how it kind of looks in the slack so you can see we'll have different channels um, each uh, challenge has a channel and we also have a plenum channel where you can ask questions so if you ever need any help we will answer you there thank you very much thank you lisa this is very useful you're going to be they're doing the whole hack days and moderating a little bit also the channels if needed. So we have the same with Miro. There's a little introduction that Anna Dietrich is going to take care of. Yes, hello everyone. 
Uh, first of all, thank you, Lisa, for the brief introduction of Zoom and Slack. Um, should any of you feel like those two tools are insufficient for the communication within your team? Um, we would uh, like to introduce you to Miro. Um, it's a platform that we recommend. You don't have to use it, but uh, it's certainly a very useful tool. So Miro is basically a virtual whiteboard and it allows your team to collaborate. You can collect, share, and also visualize your ideas regarding the challenge. And it's usually used for brainstorming, for developing concepts, but you can also create customer journeys or business models, etc. cetera. Um, more of these functions and more information to Miro, you will find in the video link that we will post in the chat now. And if any of you are interested in uh, working with Miro or having a closer look and trying it out, then I would like to ask you to quickly write me a mail so that I can set up the board for you and your team members. Very good, thank you, Anna. Thank you, Lisa. So there are only a few things left to say before you go to the breakout rooms to choose your challenge or maybe talk with your challenge owners a little more detailed about the break, uh, about the challenge. So. This is very important, your next steps. The group building takes place in these Zoom sessions. There will be breakout rooms. Um, I don't allow you to enter them yet because I want you to have here, um, but in a minute you will be able to enter the breakout rooms. So the challenge owners that are presented will be in these breakout rooms. The rooms are numbered with, and there is a little keyword about every challenge. So it reminds you of the challenge. You can move from one breakout room to another. You're very free to talk to one challenge owner and then go to the next one, talk there and, and make your mind up, which is really the best challenge for you. We recommend that you have a maximum group size of five hackers or participants for the non-data-based non challenges. That's a recommendation. The file where you can enter your name afterwards has six columns, so for six participants. In case that so, a lot of people want to go for challenge number whatever, challenge number eight, it doesn't exist. But if you, if uh, there are a lot of people for one challenge, we can also make two parallel groups, two concurring groups who work on the same challenge. That'll be a challenge for the challenge owner because he needs to take care of both, but still that will be an, an option. We will be moderating this process a little bit in case we see there are too many people for uh, working effectively on one challenge. We will help you to maybe split the groups or find another challenge. Please do not leave the Zoom session today before you have entered your name in the Google Sheet. And Lisa is going to chat now the, the link to this Google Sheet. So you have to sign up if you want to participate, you should leave your name for one of the challenges and please only one. So we had in the past people who uh, went, went to several challenges. That obviously doesn't work normally. In case of troubles, if in technical troubles, I mean, please come back to the main room. There will be always people to help you and, and go further. In case you want to talk to somebody uh, about Miro or Slack, there will be an additional room for, for Slack and Miro knowledge that you can get there. But the main thing is that you select a challenge first. Now, I have one more slide. I would like to wish you good luck for the group building. And once again, I would like to remind you that 28th of April, we start at nine with the same plenary Zoom link that you're using now. You will receive an email on Monday with more information about the hack days and all kinds of links that you can use for working or even start working on the challenges uh, if you want to. So I'd, I'd like to thank you for attending. Before I thank you for attending, I hand over back to um, Reto. Maybe you know something about the challenges that were not presented or shall we move on? We have to move on at the moment. We will check it in the 
background, oh. yeah. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I talk, can you say a few words about them or not at all? Not at all at the moment, sorry. <laughs> okay, so there will be uh, rooms, breakout rooms for these challenges too, in case somebody's interested you can still um, go there and talk maybe to other people who are interested so i'll now open the zoom breakout rooms and then you can select your breakout rooms so please use this icon down here it'll look similar to the screenshot you see here but uh, you of course have not only room one you have also the name of the challenge and the, the real number okay so Good luck with selecting challenges. If you have questions right now, you can ask them right afterwards as soon as people who um, want to go to the challenge breakout rooms are there. We start the breakout sessions and you can select them on your own. It seems to work. The first one have selected the rooms. Zoom 